Hey fairy grasshoppers, it's Bridget. I wanted to show you another one of my morning card readings. This one, this one took me off guard <laughs> because I didn't think it would get this big and it's a big, deep topic. So first of all, I started with my oums. You know, I love it. My Celtic tree wisdom and the first oum, this is a stave. No, I'm Stave, that I got was the yew tree, Y-E-W, the yew tree. Now, I talked about this one in one of my previous card readings, I believe. I shared this. I believe I shared that one with you. If not, I did get this one earlier this week. This is a tree known to be found in cemeteries, common tree to be found in cemeteries in Great Britain. And it has a lot of depth of meaning for me and i i've had my staves here's my staves over here i've had them for gosh since last fall so many many months now what, seven eight nine no way more than that um a long time right and i've hardly gotten this tree this is the tree that on the calendar uh during the year is the the tree that bridges the year so it's near the at the end of the year after the the Christmas holiday into the new year so it's a, a bridge really a bridge or a transition between one year to the next and when I read in the Celtic tree oracle guidebook that it was again a tree that's found in cemeteries in Great Britain it really <laughs> struck a chord with me as far as the the energy that it offers now it, it kind of has this interesting duality it's a uh, long lasting so longevity and yet found in cemeteries because of its longevity almost seems ironic or like a interesting combination don't you think so definitely leans to afterlife so the longevity of the life of the, these trees help to keep a safe and sacred space around the cemetery and it provides this peaceful quiet contemplative energy so i love this i just i really like this tree it feels feels good to me supportive etc however today it means something more so i made a bunch of notes in my handy dandy journal here that i'll read off a few of them to you because when i do these I do the reading and then I go back and take some notes on some of the core content or the core topics. And so I thought, oh, this might represent a transition and support during a time of change. Maybe it's a time for contemplation. Maybe I'm like bridging. It's the summer of 2021 when I'm recording this. It's July. Maybe this is like the middle of the summer. So maybe it's like a bridge. I, there's a lot of things. I'm like, okay, change in my work, my business, that kind of a thing, my family, all that's going on, right? So it could mean a lot of different things. However, I am so connected to the fact that it... So I'm, I'm reading a couple of my notes here that I felt about this card or about this, um, this, this oum, this tree. It feels like, it's kind of funny because I'm like, I'm surprised by this. I didn't really think about this as far as this being like a, a tree representing the afterlife or the spirits on the other side. And it came through really strong when I was holding this and, and feeling into this, that this is about for me, the message is of support from the other side. The spirits are cheering me on. They're like, come on, Bridget, Bridget. <laughs> and the message I got was you don't do mediumship because of the judgment. And it, 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 the judgment is amplified. And from, it, from inside you, from within you, there are limited old beliefs and patterns here about being weird that it's being that you that it's weird to talk to dead people and i'm like what i thought i was like over that and yeah no apparently not um it's about connecting the person here to the spirit that's out of the body with clear expectations you can do this know and accept that i will never be enough in any one session to help as much as i want to 
And that just blew me away. I'm like, this is about mediumship. And you know, if you've watched my work on Above Life channel, or if you've worked with me previously, you know, I've been a psychic medium and a life coach for, oh my gosh, since 2004. So what's that, like 17 years or something? It's a long time, right? And being a medium was the way I began. On Fairy Grasshopper, you can see my story. Or on my website, abovelifechannel.com, you can see my story. And you'll know that that's how it started with the death of my father. And basically, I woke up about two years after that with uh, some defining experiences that opened the floodgates to the awareness of these psychic gifts that I've had all my life. And I just thought everybody had them. I thought it was no big deal. I thought everybody just saw stuff like I did. Uh, not true, turns out. And so this card is about mediumship for me, which really caught me off guard because I wasn't planning on this. And all of a sudden they go into like, you don't do mediumship anymore in private session. You're not doing it right now because the judgment inside you is amplified. I'm like, what? Um, and limiting old beliefs about it being weird to talk to dead people is also present. And I'm like, whoa, so lots of judgment still exists underneath. And it's, it's uh, being a medium was really, really, really important to me. It has been a really important part of my life the past a, a few decades. And I, I honor it. And I, yet I know that it's such a healing opportunity for connection for people to find some kind of peace or closure and yet that to me feels like a tremendous amount of pressure and it's become more so now that I've been on YouTube. I think people watch me on Above Life channel and feel like I'm like I have all the answers or I'm super amazing at being a medium and so of course I'm going to be able to give them all the information they could possibly need or want so that they can believe for themselves that their grandma or their mother is okay or their brother is fine and, and give them all sorts of detailed information just to show that they can believe and that's a lot of pressure and I, I just don't want that and so that's why I stopped when I stopped doing mediumship for about a year ago. And it got really intense during the pandemic because of all the transitions of many, many people, mass exodus at once. There was a lot of spirits in the afterlife and I felt like they were like all kind of just chilling, hanging out, waiting, you know, and it felt like, like um, it just felt overwhelming too. So that, that also created a, a challenge for me. However, now that's not the case. And so it's very clear that one of the things that I, I have still, one of my limiting beliefs is that I will never be enough or I can never be enough to help to help people in a mediumship session as much as I'd like to or I want to. So I'm always going to feel like I'm disappointing myself. I'm never I'm never quite doing it enough. And so honestly, that's why. And it makes me emotional when I think about it because it's a really important thing to do is to help people heal and to help them grieve and a mediumship session or a connection it can really be part of that, but it takes a lot for me to, clearly it affects me personally, deeply, and not in the ways you might think, okay? So I literally wrote, are you asking me to be a medium? A conduit of connection is what I heard. I'm like, a conduit of connection? Are you writing my marketing material? <laughs> it was funny. And I got really emotional, you guys. Like I was flooded with emotion and I just felt it. And I, I asked, why am I keeping this at bay? Why is it so hard for me? It's so hard to do this, the mediumship work. And so then I asked myself what I was feeling to get in touch with my emotions, my heart, my empath energies, because that's where I feel the most tender about mediumship connection because it matters the most to me. And one of the, one of the things that they, my they my healing team let me just tell you my spiritual guides are helping me with this obviously one of the things that came through was i said one of my so what am i feeling i asked myself and my heart literally felt like there were waves in it like ocean waves and it was like picking up like the tide was coming in or something it was getting more rocky it was rocking my heart boat that's what i wrote and then a question came forward, have I dealt with my own grief? That is 
wow, boom, like mic drop. Have I dealt with my own grief? So this isn't just about me being a medium for other people. It's about me healing for myself, my own grief. And there's many forms of grief. And right away I wrote, no, this is what makes it hard to serve others who are grieving. I feel my own pain on top of theirs. I have not come close to knowing how to release, heal, and integrate fully myself. I have unresolved grief. Do we ever, do we ever find, do we ever find full completion? And I mean, obviously this is linked to my dad, but it's also linked to other pieces of my life that I feel that where parts of me have basically died, you know, where things have come to completion and then I've ended like a, a marriage and um, now my role as a very active mother of younger kids is ending. And I mean, I have one that's still young, but the others are, are quickly moving along in life. And I asked in, re in regards to the specific experiences of grief from the afterlife perspective for my loved ones in the afterlife, specifically my dad. And then there's, there's, there's um, another person as well that I'm feeling into. And I ask, what are they holding for me? And then I had this feeling of <laughs> my my tagline on Above Life channel, at the very end, I usually say, it's your life, so live it, just live it. Although I haven't said that all that much lately. I've noticed that I've kind of changed a little bit and dropped that. And when I say, what are they holding for me? What is this grief or what are these afterlife spirits or souls that I'm connected to regarding grief and, and feeling their absence? What are they holding for me? And and the response I had for myself was a beautiful, loving vision, a truer reflection of the purest meaning of living, of life. That's really profound. So my medium, my medium sessions, okay, so now, so let me show you about, so how this all went down. Okay, so before I got into the grief stuff, right, I kind of got to hear afterlife connection, bridge, and I'm like, oh, afterlife, of course, by the cemetery is the bridge between worlds. I'm like, oh, and then all of a sudden the grief thing, like, are you still grieving? I'm like, whoa, what? And so then I got this card. These are the, the 13 moon oracle cards. These, that's what these are. And I got the great mother, which is earth. But this is about me as mother and the stages of me and my motherhood. This is the archetypal card. Each of the cards in this deck, there's 13 archetypes and there's three cards for each. Um, a tool, a frequency, and the actual archetype itself. And this is the archetype of the great mother. So this is like the fullness of the mother. So you have the mother in the woman, the divine woman in many, in her three aspects, you know, when she's a child, when she's a daughter, then when she becomes a mother, then when she becomes a grandmother. The grandmother state is the, the, the wise woman incorporating the knowledge and the wisdom, right? And I'm sort of between the mother and the wise woman, um, age-wise, st style, a place in life-wise. However, I'm also the daughter because it's my father, my parents in the afterlife that is that the grief for me is at. And so, I mean, that really, this really stuck out, stuck out to me in regards to that, but also applies to me as a mother in the stage of life I'm in where I have a kid that's going off to college. I have one that's already out of the house right now. And then next year I have another one that will be graduating high school. So it's like boom, 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 lots of change quickly. And so quickly releasing and clearing this role and redefining it, letting it evolve. Um, so that was a huge piece for me. This is very meaningful to me. Then I got this card, which is the frequency of orange, which is sacral shocker, which I've been doing a ton of work on, which is about desire, drive, dreams. Um, what do I want? What are my needs versus my family? 
and this is a common balance for many of us, what are our needs versus our family's needs or what are our needs versus um, our, the needs in our relationships that we're in. And this passion card is really about the dreams and desires that are not even spoken or not acknowledged. And for me, the sacral chakra, which is what this is connected to, the orange energy, the womb space, which is the mother, like that's where you have your babies, you know, that's where you house them and hold them and keep them safe and sacred. And I've had four, so <laughs> I've carried four babies. So this is really meaningful to me in the transition of this part of me and the shifting of it is, is really important. It's something I've been working on this whole year of 2021 and consciously working on it actually with a feelings coach, a coach specifically that I call her, I call her my feelings coach. That's not what she'd call herself. She's just a coach, but I call her my feelings coach because I work on my feelings with her. And then this one came after. So I'll share that one after. But so then I'm like medium sessions. Okay. So my medium sessions. And I said, so are you asking me to be a medium? Like, what the heck? You know, what, what is this about? This totally surprised me. I'm not working on this for my business. This is not even close to any business model I'm working on because why? Because it's hard and it takes a lot. And I mean, it just, I, ha I haven't, I have not mastered how to manage the energies of it. And that's been 17 years. Okay. 17, 17. And I care deeply about the experience for people. Too much, obviously. And so I got some cards. I pulled some cards from our Soul Coaching card deck by Denise Lynn. These links will be below for the Celtic Tree Oracle, the Divine Feminine deck, the 13 Moon Oracle, and the Soul Coaching. This, these ones are great. These are the perfect ones to have by your computer at work. Super easy, positive cards. And nobody would really be like, hey, they're non-denominational. It's nice. Anyway. That's what these ones are right here, Denise Lynn, soul coaching. So then I got, so first I got courage, then I got breakthrough and it came upside down, but I let it be upside down because I liked the, I usually don't read cards upside down, right side up, but this seemed really poignant. And so I let it be upside down and then I got enthusiasm and emerging. So this, it's pretty awesome. So there's some commonalities here. First of all, there are two suns here in these two cards that really stood out to me. I have been working with the solar energy, which is more of a masculine integration of energy. And I love the sun and the cycle that we're in right now is summer, as I mentioned, July, which the sun is like this beautiful, valuable, treasured commodity for me, especially as I live in Minnesota in the United States. And so it's cold and wintry for like five months out of the year. So this is a big deal for me. And it really is about energy. It speaks to energy and inspiration and, and what fuels me and drives me. And it, um, so let me see. And then going back, the courage card, this card is courage. This reminds me of one of my spirit guides St. Catherine is one of my spirit guides. She works with the divine marriage between masculine and feminine energies. And here this card says courage. I live life passionately and courageously. So here passion connecting into the womb space, honoring this is like a leadership energy connecting to the divine feminine for me. Again, St. Catherine, she's the wheel. When I see St. Catherine, I see a wheel, which is like a weaver energy a cosmos, a consciousness that's greater than, a bigger picture kind of vibration, the courage to see the bigger picture. So this is again about my mediumship, medium sessions. Mediumship, by the way, is psychic medium means connecting to the afterlife and being psychic about it, not just like doing a card reading for somebody, but actually using intuitive psychic skills like the clairs, which is clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience. So seeing, hearing, or sensing, feeling, the information or messages from the spirit from the afterlife. So that's what that means. So I thought, oh, I better tell you that just in case. So we're working off the same definition, right? Okay, so these two go together and this is about the courage to keep holding on to this information, to, to the status quo as far as, it's not a breakthrough, it's not time to move ahead. It's time to recognize that there's deeper meanings to this pattern that I'm in about mediumship and private session. To not do it, like keep holding on to this same 
same practice that I've had, which is not to do them, have the courage to keep saying no to people because I get requests all the time. Oh, Bridget, I really need you to connect with. And I'm like, I'm not, I just, I can't, I'm not doing that right now. So, I mean, I want to help people. I can't do it. I have to say no, because it's, I have to take care of myself. And this is about honoring that this sacred space and to work on understanding better how to work with this unresolved grief and that it's not like a, a dig on me that I have, I still have grief to release and heal and to integrate for myself. But maybe that's just natural. That's a natural part of the process and understanding. And so it can make me a better psychic, a better medium and a better intuitive life coach. So I also thought this is kind of fascinating because usually when you look at it like this, she's reaching up to the stars or maybe the sun. It could be the sun, right? And here's the sun theme. But I feel like it's because it's below like this, it's almost like she's going through a portal. She's going under or into the earth energy, which is what the tree wisdom is. It's like the roots of the tree going deep in. And this could be the sourcing energy from the earth, the mother earth energy, from our core roots, from that like magma in the center of the earth, which would be like a fire energy connecting to that as a source. But here it's like the sun energy and almost like the sky kind of becomes this, this um, almost like water element balancing this heat of this light or this fire, this, this almost alchemical kind of vibe here. And this purple is connected to the crown chakra. So that's the wisdom of the afterlife, the wisdom of the divine spirit guides and such, the divine source and guidance on that. So to me, this is absolutely the way it's supposed to be because it's not time for a breakthrough. It's time for a break into, <laughs> go in, go in, Bridget, and just let yourself stay. Stay in this place, this, you know, hold your, hold your boundaries when it comes to mediumship. Just say no. People can find other people to work with, you know. They really want to work with you. They'll intuitive coach with you. And then when you're ready to do mediumship, then, you know, they can do that. Okay, so these two, though, then, again, the sun energy, but I want to share with you something about this. So then they said, so my team clearly was like, okay, so be excited about what's coming next. Enthusiasm and en emerging, both E's, which I find fascinating, E energy words. So enthusiasm, another word for me, for hope and inspiration together, and emerging, another uh, word for, like, outcomes or becoming. And... This energy is just awesome. The blue is like Archangel Michael, which is a protective energy. And the bird and the wings, just such an incredible a nod to the air element, which supports change and transitions. And, and the energy here, it has this, um, what was I going to say about this one? So... The sun here kind of has a green, a little bit, it's hard to see it here, but it's kind of a green hue. There's kind of green here, lime green, a little, a little bit light green sage and a little bit of light green on the sun. It's kind of hard to see it, doesn't really show up that well, but the green is for me, the heart chakra, or the heart space and the healing of that. And then here we've got the yellow, the sun is depicted as yellow or the solar energy is depicted as yellow, which is the solar plexus or spirit. So this is the partnership, the enthusiasm and emerging is the partnership between the heart being all in the heart space, the heart chakra being all in to support this, okay, this healing and also this becoming. And then the spirit, my spirit, my solar plexus say, yes, yes, let yourself process all this. Let yourself move into this state of truly integrating your own personal healing and understanding grief in a, in a deeper way that will allow you to serve in a way that isn't hurtful to you. It doesn't cause you pain, Bridget. I thought that was so sweet. I'm like, oh, they love me so much, don't they? Oh, they're so nice. And then this one, I love this with the goddess holding the lotus energy because that's really becoming, she's reaching, just like this one's reaching in, this one's reaching up and out to share. So that was really positive and inspiring to me. Then I was guided to do, I just felt really pulled to do another one of the 13 moon cards. And so I brought it right up here and it felt like it fit right here across, across to this. And so what this is, is this is the goddess of love. And remember how I said in this 13 moon deck, there's the, um, what do I say? There is the archetype, there is the frequency, and then there's the tool. So the tool here is about expanding, sacred tool of the senses, to expand the senses. And so 
to me, this is clairsentience, this goddess of love, this is about feeling, and that's really where it's all at for me, emerging, allowing myself to feel my feelings. Like you, you saw, I said that I asked myself, what am I feeling? What am I feeling here? And then that led to the question that came right there shortly thereafter, have I dealt with my own grief? And I had no idea the depths of this for myself. It's like I'm grieving the past and the future is what they kind of said to me. And they're like, but you're in the present. So gather all these things together, circle them around you, stay in your sacred space and let yourself move through some of these additional layers so that then you'll release some judgment because pain just amplifies judgment. And I'm like, whoa, so grief amplifies judgment. Can you believe that? Like that blows my mind. That was such a profound realization. Grief amplifies judgment. So wow, this was like a huge, this is amazing reading. So I wrote a bit more. See if I can read any of it to you. Change and shift what grounds me, what connects me to my mediumship work. That's what I'm doing right now in regards to this. So that's the invitation is to consider the change and shift in what, what is grounding me or connecting me to mediumship, the afterlife, right? What is connecting me to the afterlife? To expand upon my purpose for connection. So in other words, it's not just my dad in the past and what's happened to me. It's who I am today, who I have become, bringing that into my work in the present moment. And then I, was, I made some notes like, it's more like connection counseling for self-healing and release of grief, I said. So yeah, I, I just wrote about some of the cards and what came up. These three cards together are pretty amazing. I mean, they, they tell the whole story anyway, just these together or these with this tells, tells the story as well. This, is, this basically shows the whole process. This shows what's happening at an alchemical level with the energies and this just very real real shows the structure it's so great isn't it hmm. i'm transmuting my path as the mother from grief and loss of what i wanted as a mother to the grief in becoming a mother to becoming the three levels of the mother the maiden and the matriarch to being the divine child then the divine parent now and into the future eventually the wise woman with a legacy a lineage so I am the grieving child at this state. It's just very interesting. I'm just like, whoa. <sighs> deep, deep. All right, so this is Bridget. Thanks so much for watching this incredible card reading. Like I didn't expect this. Thank goodness it was a Sunday, so I had a nice mellow day to walk a lot, to process, to just let this energy kind of simmer. And this is the evening, not when I'm recording this for you, so you can I mean, I've been, through, I had to kind of let myself kind of be with this. And so, and that's where it will stay. I'm not going to go deep into it tomorrow or anything like that. I will notice the you when it comes up again and ask myself the questions about grief. Like, where am I at in the cycle? Where am I in the process? What am I grieving today? What am I feeling? What is, how is that showing up? That layer is just an aspect of, of, of what I'm working with now at this time, because I'm working on many things just like you. We have many things that we're working on all at the same time as we're moving through our life process and our, our experiences, right? So this is very real life, how you work with cards, how you get intuitive messages, especially for yourself, because it's not easy to be psychic for yourself because there's a lot of self-doubt that sneaks in and it's hard to believe sometimes some of the messages. And of course, is it your brain kind of trying to insert itself? I'm a, I've been a psychic for 17 years, you heard me. And I still question myself and that's natural and that's good because that means you have integrity and you're checking yourself and you care about the quality and the accuracy of the information and honoring it. And so, and really the truth, the truth as it's showing up right here, right now. And so, I mean, that's, that's natural. That's natural. So this is, a very deep but important example of how you can do readings for yourself. And don't forget a journal. I'm linking them below, some of these beautiful journals below. Love them, use them every single day. Thank you so much for being here. I hope I've inspired your spirit to use your own intuition and your tools like your card decks or your ohms if you have them. 
or maybe crystals if you have those or runes runes rune stones <coughs> if you have those all right i see it's time for me to go thanks so much for being here have a great day